Great. OK, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Osma Suominen, and I'm going to talk about improving the quality of SCOS vocabularies with SCOSify. I come from Aalto University in Finland, uh, from the Computing Research Group. And I've uh, done this uh, work under the supervision of Professor Eva Hyvönen. So my outline of this talk is first I'll introduce the um, topic of SCOS vocabularies and the research questions that we're tackling here. So um, first of all, get into what kind of quality criteria there are for SCOS vocabularies. Then we try to evaluate existing SCOS vocabularies and uh, finally try to fix the problems we found in them. And then evaluate the tool we created for this purpose, which is called SCOSify, and then uh, round up with a discussion and uh, with future work. So uh, as you, m many of you probably know, the Simple Knowledge Organization System, or SCOS, is an ontology uh, defined by the W3C for expressing uh, taxonomies, classifications, subject headings, thesauri, and other kind of this uh, relatively simple uh, organization systems. And um, they are typically used as hub data sets to link between different document collections. So for example, if you have different libraries that use the same classification system for indexing books, then uh, you can express this uh, classification as a SCOS vocabulary and then link the different library collections uh, through this classification with regular RDF and linked data tools. But it's important uh, like Martin Hepp said this morning, that, that, that the quality of data is also a very, uh, perhaps an underappreciated aspect on, uh, of linked data or semantic web. So it's important that these vocabularies uh, uh, are, have a valid structure, that they don't have obvious problems in their structure, and so that you don't end up with problems when you try to integrate data using these vocabularies. So for example, so these quality criteria they mainly cost, consist of these codified integrity rules, and, but also some known best practices, which may not always be very clear cut or black and white, but there are some sort of uh, rules of thumb how to make a good vocabulary. Uh, here's an example, simple cost vocabulary. This is um, supposed to be a, a, a small thesaurus representing cars, just to illustrate the, the <coughs> normal parts of a cost vocabulary. So, um, this is the thesaurus, it has a label called vehicle thesaurus and it has a top level concept called vehicle which is a SCOS concept and it has a preferred label vehicle and also there are some sub concepts, there's a moped and there's a car and a microcar which is uh, a subtype of a car but this is, not, this is not OWL so we're not using RDFS this is a SCOS broader relationship which is sort of uh, a bit fuzzier than their RDFS or OWL our way of classifying things. So you can also use this for part of relations or other kinds of uh, mm, relations which are, which are not strictly subclass relations or, or sub, uh, subtype. Okay, then there are uh, also you can express uh, preferred labels like car and alternate labels like automobile in this, this example. And you can also have associative relationships. This is common in, in, in Cisori, that you have, have uh, concepts that are somehow related, but they are not strictly in the hierarchy. So you can have this scos related relationship. For example, a moped and a microcar uh, are somehow related. They both have a small engine. You can't drive very fast with them, but they are not the same. Uh, so they are not also, uh, one is not a subtype of the other. Okay. Uh, these are some of the linked data sets that are uh, that use cost because you can't make up the details I know but uh, just to show that it's used quite a lot in the linked data cloud you can see there are three bigger clusters here on the right hand side there is some library data so for example there's a library of congress subject headings and then <coughs> lots of other library classification systems that are uh, mapped to it so this is here on the right hand side and also library collections and here on the bottom, there, there are some environmental uh, vocabularies like agrovoc, the UN vocabulary uh, for agriculture. Uh, and on the left side, there are some government data, mainly from the UK, that use a lot of SCOS as well. And then there are some um, others here, all around them. And also, this is, not, this is just those that are, have been explicitly tagged with formal SCOS on the data hub. But uh, actually, there are, I think, quite a few of these that 
use at least a bit of SCOS. For example, DBpedia uses SCOS, but it's not tagged. So I didn't paint it red in this picture, but, but it, maybe it should. Um, <coughs> OK, then to the research questions. Uh, what criteria, first of all, what cr criteria can be used to validate a SCOS vocabulary to find out whether it's a good quality or not? And the second question is, OK, so now we have the criteria. How well do the existing vocabularies fulfill them? And the third question is, OK, we know how, the, how bad the vocabularies are. How can we make them better? So how can SCOS vocabulary quality be improved? OK, start with the criteria. <coughs> so uh, first of all, SCOS itself, the W3C reference on the URL is, oh, OK. It's, it's, you can see it here, but not on the back. OK, so it defines some integrity conditions. And um, the specification says that they are included to promote interoperability by defining the circumstances under which data are not consistent with respect to the SCOS data model. So they are mainly rules that say this is not good. This is not OK. You can't have this in a vocabulary. Um, first of all, there are some conditions for labels. So uh, one condition is that uh, SCOS has uh, three main types of labels, uh, preferred labels, alternate labels, and hidden labels. And SCOS says that you can't have, for a single concept, you can't have the same label as both a preferred and an alternate label, or both preferred and hidden, and so on. So for example, on the left side, there is a concept that is, uh, has car both as a preferred and an alternate label. This is, according to SCOS, this is not OK. And then <coughs> also, you can't have uh, several preferred labels in, in the same language. So, so for example, here would be a concept that, that it has preferred labels truck and lorry in English. And according to SCOS, you can't do this. You should choose only one. But in different languages, of course, you can have. Um, then there are some conditions on structure. So um, um, there's the broader, broader property, which forms a kind of hierarchy. But SCOS says, uh, and, and also the associative related relationship, uh, but SCOS says that you can't have this within the same hierarchy. So, so in this case, for example, van would have a related a relationship to vehicle, which happens to be above it, directly above it in the hierarchy. So there, I didn't draw it here, but there's an implicit broader transitive relationship between van and vehicle, and, and so, um, which can be inferred using all. Uh, so in this case, the related relationship cannot exist here. And on the right side, uh, the SCOS also includes some mapping properties. So you can map between two different vocabularies. And th there are different uh, properties for that, like exact match and related match. But you can't mix them. So you can't say something is exactly the same, but also related. Um, and then there are finally some disjointness, disjointness axioms in SCOS. It says that you can't have something that is both a concept and a concept scheme. A concept scheme is normally used to represent the whole vocabulary, like, oh, like a thesaurus or a classification. So you can't have something that is both a concept scheme and a concept. And similarly, you can't have something that is both a concept and a collection. This is forbidden by SCOS. Um, OK, now and then um, the Semantic Web Company guys in Austria, they made this uh, pool party uh, tool for editing SCOS vocabularies. And part of this tool party suit is a consistency checker, which is very handy because you can give it a, a SCOS vocabulary and it will tell you uh, whether it uh, follows the, the integrity conditions. And it also checks for some other, other things which are not in, in the SCOS reference, but with, which can be considered uh, as good practice. So um, you can use it. The only restriction is that you can only give it 20 megabytes maximum. And it also has this captcha, so you can't really use it. Uh, you can't automate it. You have to use it manually. Uh, so when you give it a thesaurus, you get a report like this. This is for the um, um, International Astronomical Union thesaurus of 1993. And this is a legacy thesaurus, which was just converted into SCOS and published by uh, the International Virtual Observatory Alliance. That's some, some kind of group of astronomers that try to collaborate using RDF tools. That's great. I didn't know, don't know much about them, but uh, it's nice that these things are used. So uh, if I give the, the pool party checker this thesaurus, I will get a report like this that says that there are some 
first of all, some uh, perhaps more minor issues. There are some missing language tags, missing labels, and loose concepts. And then these later ones are actually the integrity conditions. So there's no disjointness problems, but the, the use of labels is not consistent. And also this use of semantic relations, it's not consistent. I know you can't really maybe make up the text, but this is just um, the nice overview of how your vocabulary is doing. And this is not my work. They, they just published it, and I'm just using it. And then finally, there is a um, project going on at the University of Vienna, where Christian Mader uh, is uh, uh, creating a, a big set of quality criteria for voca uh, SCOS vocabularies. It calls them the QSCOS criteria, and, and also a tool to assess the vocabularies using these criteria. Uh, some of them are just uh, like the one previous ones, that they are the integrity conditions, but some are fuzzier. They are more like uh, things that you should check in practice. For example, if your vocabulary is not linked to other vocabularies, it's probably not as good as, as it could. But uh, these are not uh, like black and white truths. They are more, more uh, things that you that may want to improve on. Okay, so this is, this is also a, a set of criteria, and it's uh, broader than the others. Uh, <coughs> uh, in our work, we just made a comparison between them and mapped sort of between these different uh, points of view. And you can see that here in the middle, the red area, those are the SCOS integrity conditions, but then there are some other uh, quality criteria. I won't get in, in detail into those, but if you read the paper, you can see some thoughts about them. Um, so this is mainly a, the, the, so this is the set of criteria I'm using for the rest of this talk. Uh, this is the synthesis of existing criteria. There is not much added by us. It's just uh, taking the best parts of what's what's in what's out there. Okay, then move on to uh, the validity of existing SCOS vocabularies. So we we took uh, a set of uh, SCOS vocabularies that were published by different organizations. Uh, there are four, 14 vocabularies in total. You can see that there are different sizes. Uh, the smallest one is less than 100 concepts, and the biggest ones are uh, uh, around half a million concepts. So they are pretty huge, I think, by any standards. Uh, the Library of Congress subject headings is probably one of the better known ones in this area. Uh, and also DBpedia categories is, is very big. It's, it's basically the categories from Wikipedia expressed using SCOS. Uh, so we took all these vocabularies and tried to see how they uh, measure up on the quality. So uh, we, we put either, each of these to the pool party checker as a first test. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the biggest ones were too big for the checker because there's 20 me megabyte limit, but for the remaining ones, we found a number of problems. So <coughs> there was actually only one vocabulary that passed all the checks properly. That's the GBA thesaurus on, um, on I think it's, it's, it's for geology and it's based in Austria and it's also made using the pool party tools. It's maybe not a surprise that, that it follows the specifications set by the pool party people. Uh, but anyway, all the others have had uh, some problems, and especially I think troubling is that, uh, okay, if you forget the smallest ones, all these bigger vocabularies, they uh, fail on one or more of the SCOS integrity conditions, which are the right-hand columns here. So, so in fact, uh, most, at least based on this sample, uh, it seems that many, if not most, SCOS vocabularies uh, do not follow the integrity conditions set in the SCOS specification. Okay, so how can we fix this? Uh, we made a tool called SCOSify, which is, um, well, it's, it's pretty simple. It's a Python script. You give it a vocabulary and you get, it tries to uh, correct and to find it first to, to identify and then to correct as many problems as it can and it, it will give you a corrected vocabulary and a report of what it did, what it found out. Uh, it's been published on Google Code. You can use it. And there's also a public demonstration, a web interface you can use. The web interface is a little bit limited. You can't do everything with it if you want to uh, process the big vocabulary or set some of the options you need to use the command line version. But, but you can try it out with the web interface. So. 
this is the same slide I showed earlier. This is the uh, astronomy CSRS uh, report from pool parties. So you can see that there are uh, five different kinds of problems here. And this, when I give it to Scosify, I will get this kind of a, a report. Or this is just this is the web interface actually. Uh, so there are um, 41 warnings uh, uh, in this category, and then there are some some uh, not so important, more than a thousand messages, and then some more warnings uh, about different things that a Scotify tool found found to be problematic. And uh, finally, you get the, the processed vocabulary and the report, which you can read. And then uh, when I take the processed vocabulary and put it back into the pool party tool, I get a report like this. Yay, it worked. So uh, all of the problems in the vocabulary uh, that were found by pool party were fixed by Scosify. And this happens for most of the other vocabularies, as we will see in a moment. Uh, so how, do, how does Scosify do this? Uh, first of all, for the label re related problems. Um, one, one possible issue is that there are ambiguous pref label values. So there are several preferred labels in the same language for the same concept. Well, Scosify, you can choose the policy. It will choose either the shortest or the longest one as the preferred label, and the rest will become alt labels. Uh, then if language tags are missing, you can give it an option to, you know, most of the, if, if you can give it an option to say, for example, make all the labels English that don't have a language tag, and that will happen. And also, it was quite a common problem that the concept schemes were not labeled in the Scott vocabulary, so you can give Scottify a label and it will just put it in there. Uh, and finally, um, surprisingly, many of the vocabularies had extra white space in their labels, probably due to maybe graphical user interfaces that were used to produce them in the first place. You don't see the spaces in the field necessarily. Or maybe there was some conversion from XML, for example, which uh, happened to include some extra white space. And this was not noticed by the, by the people who published it. So, so Scotify will remove that as well, because it's probably not useful and might cause some problems in the future. And then <coughs> there might be uh, disjoint labels. So for example, this is the schools online CSRs used, by, used in Australia and New Zealand. And it has a concept uh, which has a papier mache both as a pref label and an alternate label, which is not okay according to SCOS. So Scotify will remove the alternate label in this case. And then here was a curious example from the uh, German National Library subject headings. Uh, it included a concept that had two German preferred labels. One is uh, hematogen oxidationstherapy. And the other one, it also includes Piccolo uh, Flötenspiel. I have no idea how this happened, and I don't know what this means, but I imagine it's something like this, because... Uh, <laughs> so you gave a high-pressure oxygen therapy and, and play the Piccolo Flute as well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a graphic artist. <coughs> Okay, uh, in this case, Scotify will just pick one of these and, and make the uh, other an alternate label. But it's obvious here that the problem is deeper. You, this is just a sort of a patching the problem, uh, the, the patching the symptom, but the, the problem is probably somewhere deeper. Okay, then the structure problems. Uh, it's considered good practice to mark all the top level concepts in a SCOS vocabulary using the has top concept property. Uh, but sometimes, often this is not done, uh, so Scotify will do it for you. And also, there are the broader and narrower relations, which are uh, uh, inverse properties of each other. So, and also, related is, is defined in SCOS as a uh, symmetric property. So Scotify will just make sure that uh, these are uh, consistently used. Of course, you can use an old reasoner for that as well. But, um, um, and then uh, there's the problem of, of having related concepts in the same hierarchy. So for example, this is the STW CSRS. Uh, it has a concept development cooperation, whose broader concept is development aid, and the broader concept of that is foreign policy. But there's also a related relationship between those two levels. 
And if you remember from the beginning, this is not allowed by SCOS because, well, there's a broader, a re, uh, broader transitive relationship here and, and it's disjoint with related. So SCOSify will just remove this related relationship unless you tell it not to do it, which is also possible. Uh, and here's another example from the Library of Congress subject headings. There's, uh, there are some, well, I'm not a philosopher, but uh, there are some quite confusing, uh, well, let's say mm, abstract things there, like pragmatism, which, uh, whose broader concept is idealism, broader concept is monism, broader concept is reality, and broader concept is truth. Uh, the hierarchy is quite confusing here, and there's, I'm, I've uh, omitted a lot of those other concepts here around. But there are also some related relationships here that co go up several levels, and this is not allowed by SCOS. So SCOSify will cut this out. <coughs> and then finally, there's well, not finally, but <laughs> anyway, uh, there's uh, there might be some cycles in the hierarchy. Uh, this is pretty common in the in the SCOS vocabularies that when you start from the top of the vocabulary and you go deeper and deeper and deeper eventually you loop back to some, some point where you already were. And this can, of course, be problematic for, for example, if you're doing a, um, a query expansion using the vocabulary. Okay. So Scotify will try to identify the where the problem is. In simple cases, it's quite straightforward, but in, in, in um, complex cases, it can be difficult. Uh, <coughs> then there are some disjointness problems. Uh, you remember the disjointness axioms. These, uh, if, if there's something that claims to be both a concept and a collection, for example, this is hard to correct in general because uh, for a machine, of course, uh, because it doesn't really know what, the, what was the intent behind. But there is a specific... So in general, this can't be corrected, at least as far as I know. Uh, but uh, there's a, spe a specific case when uh, uh, properties that are intended for SCOS concepts are used on SCOS collections, and SCOSify will remove them. There are, there's a case of this in the Finnish general source. Okay, so um, <coughs> when you give all these vocabularies to SCOSify, this was the results from the pool party that I showed you al already, SCOSify will perform a number of corrections. And... Uh, in most cases, the number of corrections will match what's on, on this side. But there are some granularity differences here between the tools. Uh, but what's interesting, I think, is to look at what, uh, how many of these problems were actually fixed when you re-evaluate the vocabulary. So uh, if, you take on, on, if you consider the level where you take each cell of these, so you group these by the vocabulary and the type. So there are 28 different problems that we found in these vocabularies. And out of these, uh, 24 were corrected by Scotify. Two turned out to be not real problems at all. They were just um, problems with the pool party checker. And two were, were not able to be fixed using <coughs> Scotify. So we were able to uh, fix over 90% of the problems that we found. So <coughs> evaluation of Scotify. Um, we were able to fix most problems, but there are some remaining issues that are discussed in the paper. The performance of Scotify, well, it's a simple script. It's pretty fast. For most vocabularies, it's just a few seconds to process, but the biggest ones, DBpedia and uh, Library of Congress subject headings, took half an hour and one and a half hour on a normal PC. Uh, we also use it in the Onki ontology service that you may have heard. Uh, it's a publishing platform for vocabularies. We use it uh, to automatically process everything that is published there. So, so it's fast enough that it doesn't, doesn't uh, I mean, we can just automate things. And it's, we, it can be used as a validation tool or especially as a complement to other tools because um, it's not intended uh, as a validation tool, but it can be used, for example, for large vocabularies which cannot be processed by web tools. Um, so, to wrap up, uh, we found that most vocabularies, especially the large ones, they violate the integrity conditions. And also, uh, we think that um, this particular SCOS integrity constraint that says that rela related relationship cannot be used within the hierarchy, is, it's violated by almost every vocabulary, and I, we think it's a little bit too strict. It might make sense to say that it's not good to have related 
um, on to the direct broader uh, concept, but uh, between these levels, you can argue, argue that it should be perfectly fine to have associated uh, relationships, like in Library of Congress subject headings. Currently, we're doing a more co comprehensive list of qu quality criteria, merging with the QSCOS criteria, and we're, we're going to test more vocabularies. This was just a small sample of 14, but there are quite, quite a number of them available. And we're using the pool party checker, the QSCOS tool, and SCOSIFY. And of course, there were some remaining problems we we're trying to address. And we're collaborating with Christian Mader from Vienna, who is doing the same kind of work. Thank you. Uh, and we'll have a demo in the demo session tonight if you want to uh, see more. This, I didn't show a live demo, but I, I will show there. quite interesting. Um, so it doesn't uh, help our communication, but it gets recorded and then we can <laughs> answer offline. Uh, so yeah, no, this is nice work. I was wondering whether you have any plans uh, to uh, to make your system a, kind of a little bit more knowledge-based uh, um, or let's say more intelligent, you know, as this is a knowledge engineering conference. In, the in, in a lot of these cases that uh, you, you mentioned, uh, um, you could, for example, try and use external um, um, knowledge sources like uh, DPP or the web itself, uh, or, for example, like you can use a, a, a Watson uh, um, a gateway c and, and then trying to find out how, um, you know, what kind of modeling decisions people have made uh, to solve those problems. Because a lot of the, you know, the, the nice thing about cost vocabulary is, is that very often they, they, you know, they're very simple. And especially for certain domains, you can actually get a lot of um, additional information about those terms which, for example, may help you in deciding which ones are the most common, which one are the most, uh, you know, the least common, uh, and, and also maybe uh, solve a few other problems of this kind. Have, have you, you know, have you any plans to go in to that direction? Yeah. Question about using external sources. Uh, we don't have any plans in this direction currently. Uh, I think uh, those cases where that could be useful are relatively small part of the corrections here. Uh, but, for example, I know the, the semantic web company people, they have made this, uh, I don't remember the name, but they, they, they have a tool for extracting parts of DBpedia and making that into a SCOS vocabulary. That sounds a little bit similar to what you're proposing. Uh, mm, no? It doesn't to me, but... <laughs> because I think, I don't think the right way is to take DBpedia and make it to SCOS. I think the right way to go is to take a SCOS vocabulary and just fix it to reach a little bit by using, you know, individual, nicely selected uh, elements from from DPpedia from something else, which is a bit different. Yeah, okay, I understand. I think that's a good su suggestion, and, and we will try to look whether it's 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 feasible for us to do this. Uh, I also know that some of the, for example, some of the cycle collection, um, the more more fancy. Um, cycle breaking algorithms make use of external data but, but they are more I mean focused on particular domains and, and we w would like to keep this generic so yeah. other questions yeah 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 just a technical information so you mentioned that there is a limit uh, of the dimension of the vocabulary that, that you can uh, check and uh, correct uh, did I understand well uh, at the moment? So, as uh, many of uh, these vocabularies, uh, at least the ones that are used uh, in real cases, uh, could be really big. Do you plan to extend or uh, make uh, the tool more robust in order to uh, to support even very large vocabularies? So um, I I haven't seen SCOS vocabularies that are bigger than the ones that we used. But of course, yes, scalability is always an issue. Uh, with um, the current tool, it takes a bit less than four gigabytes to pro of memory to process the l largest ones. And as I said, one and a half hour. So uh, it's, it's probably enough for most cases. But if you need to process an even bigger one, you would switch to uh, using um, um, disk-based triple store instead of memory, but then it takes a longer time, obviously. Uh, but yeah, this hasn't been a problem in practice. So. Yes, yes, it's, it's an engineering problem. 